Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAnalog.com. Wow, I have, this video has been, some unfortunate things have happened, okay? We're gonna see, yeah. Oh, anyway, and I'll explain along the ways. This is a Corcom filter, by the way. You know, metal case, Faraday shield. That's the way it's supposed to be. No current supposed to travel through it. it. Does have a ground lug so you can connect your chassis, your safety ground to this, your chassis to this. So that way everything's at the same ground potential. But and there's Y capacitors in this too, so the leakage current will come out of that into your chassis and into your safety ground. But your power just goes through. There's isolators on the ends to keep it from conducting this. So you know, it's not like some filters you might see where a negative lead is tied to the chassis. Yeah, no. This is a Corcom filter. It's made for line frequency. And we're going to test this. And we're also going to test this little this little filter right here. Okay? This is one I got. Uh, it's also meant for AC in line. But I'm going to use it. And I might even try this guy uh, on a DC power supply. Like a switching power supply. See? How much cleaner we can make it by adding our own little filter okay but in this video what I want to do is I want to show you guys how a spectrum analyzer can be used for checking out your filters now there's actually two things one thing maybe the obvious thing you'd put a signal in here tracking generator haha -ha, we'll talk about that later uh, you inject a signal here and you look at the output and you can see uh, you know, the tracking generator would put a signal across like a bully plot, right? Straight line, say zero dB, whatever. And then you put you put this in here in between your signal and your output, and you see how much the filter works. So that's an obvious thing, maybe you'd think of doing. Another one is called insertion loss, and that might be something new for you guys. Uh, so insertion loss, what that is, is essentially all these products have EMI filters, right? Because whatever noise that's inside, you know, generated inside your coolant, you don't want to go back out into your power line, right? Also, if your power line has noise, a surge or something that comes through, you want the EMI filter to protect your equipment from that. And if you're in an EMI lab, you're gonna it's gonna test both things. One is the immunity, how immune is your device to the noise and another one is you know are you below the standard you know this you know the requirements for noise so you're not injecting noise out in that power line okay but here's the thing the the uh, insertion loss I mentioned that's something you may not be aware of or you may not be thinking of uh, when you have all these filters connected to your power line there's capacitors in here so basically you're tying a bunch of parallel capacitors to your power line so you're getting some filtering on your power line just by you know I should have a really good filtering in here because of all my equipment connected to my my plug strips right <laughs> that's insertion loss I've got lots of insertion loss here I'm going to show you what it looks like on the scope okay well I mean on the spectrum all right so what you do is now I'm going to show you a standard the military has standards for everything because military I'm going to take a shot at the audio guys. Unlike the audio guys, they have testing for everything. Everything you can think of. If a power cord can make any difference, there'd be a standard written on how to test your uh, power cord to make sure it's going to fit your, your thing. But they don't. So they don't have a standard for that. But they have standards for everything. Anything they could think of that's worthwhile, they would put a committee together to find out if it is worthwhile. If it is, they would say, okay, how do we test that? And then the committee, a bunch of smart guys get together and they go, wow, I think we ought to do this and this. And they all agree. And, uh, you know, manufacturers have to have a say too. Cause, and usually these smart guys work for manufacturers, a lot of them. And they go, yeah, yeah, we ought to do that. And then we'll all test to that standard because that would show that we're all uh, doing a good thing, whatever. So there's an insertion loss standard. I'm going to show you that standard. So let's just jump over there. And by the way, it's a freebie. So yeah, let's just jump over. I'm going to show you the standard real quick. Okay, guys, I want to show you something really cool. This is 
everyspec.com. Okay, you come here, you can type in mill standards, you can search all kinds of different ways uh, to get mill handbooks, they're really cool. So let's just go ahead and download this one. So when you come to these things, some of them are change notices like this one, but see this one's a larger file, so that's what we want. Okay, so we're going to download that Rev C. All right, so it's downloaded. Let's open it up. Okay, this is the document. Okay, let me spread it out so we can look at it. And look, it was last updated in 2000. Ah, it's only 24 years old. But look, it started off in, uh, well, the C version started off in 2009. Okay, so let's go down this document. Here's the forward. You can read this. It kind of explains what the deal is. It's good to read that. And here's, you know, table contents, of course. Okay, so here's a scope. This kind of tells you what is up. And then there's a general section. So just, you know, this is a fairly small document, but it gives you an idea how mill standards are written. And yeah, so this is just going to tell us how to do a test. And there's a couple examples in here and they tell you how to set this thing up okay so i'm going to just show you at the bench so we can go through a little quicker but basically here it is now in this thing it looks like an input and an output of a dut device under test but not really the input and output are tied together this is a bulkhead so this is where you plug in the thing that you want to check for insertion loss okay so you plug something in that's going to be in parallel to this connection this shorted connection between input and output all right so just some information so you can read to this i'm just going to browse it real quick so they talk about um, how you correct your response so you put a response in or here let me show you well that's not the right graph i wanted but you'll zero out your readings from your connectors and your cables and somewhere in here kind of talk about that kind of stuff right here see this line select the normalized function so after you uh, have some kind of curve that's not quite straight because of your cables and connections then you normalize it which means you bring it to zero so the your device will auto correct and make a zero to correct for your imperfections of your cables and connectors as long as they're not terrible and they're just kind of showing some information i'm just going to kind of scroll through this to show you but man these are in color so i can tell this is an updated document <laughs> so here we go um insertion loss okay so that's what a mill standard would look like this is a short one see army navy and air force so there we go um Hope you like that, and it's free for your download. All right, that's pretty cool, right? And it's neat that it's free. Well, it's not free. Your tax dollars paid for it, but it's free now. <laughs> Somebody's tax dollars paid. Actually, your tax dollars probably didn't because that was written a long time ago, right? I mean, you know, we've been to space. We've been all over the things. We've been building, you know, military's been building really sophisticated equipment for a long time. So these standards were all figured out when they started figuring out how electronics worked, right? So, yeah, unlike the audio guys, taking a shot at them again. Uh, you know, there's a thing called recapping in the audio community, right? That's kind of a crazy thing. Like, hey, my amplifier's 15, 20 years old. Should I recap? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> there's a middle standard for that. It tells you how it's not about recapping it's called reforming it's like how long and how often should you reform your aluminum caps so that they work properly and it tells you how to go about doing that the audio guys never did that right so i'm taking stabs at those guys because i'm trying to you know we've been talking about power cord you know power cords for audio files and all that and it's just funny how 
as much as I tell them about military stuff and the testing we do, they still go, oh, you're just stubborn. You just don't want to believe. And it's like, well, I want to believe, but I, you got to, we got to test it and, and prove it. There should be, somebody should have figured out by now in the audio community how to put a committee together and how to test a power cord to show that it, it's worthwhile spending tens of thousands or hundreds of dollars for one versus two or two dollars five dollars so so anyway yeah i want to show you those standards because when it comes to military stuff they've they've got standards for everything they're not requirements they're standard documents so you want to learn how to do this when i got in engineering in my first job man i downloaded all kinds of standards that was back in the microfish days <laughs> that's how old i am so i was printing things off microfish i it was like a kid in a candy store i'm like oh man Oh, that's how you reform capacitors? Oh, man, there's... Oh, insertion loss. What's that? Oh, man, download that. Man, I was just studying everything. Reliability. You learn so much about parts and all this kind of stuff. And, yeah. So you learn a lot of things. You don't learn about how to burn in things because, yeah, that's not a thing. <laughs> and it's kind of funny. We never talk about auction-free copper because pretty much all copper, some level, is auction-free. It's just like what percentage and what percentage is meaningful well i don't know i you know they don't worry about that when they put in space products so <laughs> all right guys um so just bashing a little bit but i'm just talking about how there are standards and it tells you how to test this so now you've seen the one for the insertion loss I, i'm going to show you some emi standards okay and i'm going to show you, it's a lot more involved, a lot more. Uh, the insertion loss is a lot simpler. But I'm going to show you those in other videos to come. Uh, I won't have the spectrum, but yeah. Um, but guys, um, here, I got to show you something. Oh, boy. Give me a thumbs up. Hey, and by the way, um, subscribe, okay? Uh, please. <laughs> I want to grow this channel. Uh, Three-fourths of you guys, um, at least three out of four people are not subscribers. And, and you know, I respond to a lot of people. I see the same people, you know, commenting, which I love that. Thank you. Please doing that, even if you don't subscribe. But come on, subscribe. If you've been here for that, that often, do me a favor, subscribe, okay? Uh, yeah, this is just one of those typical videos that I spent days on when it was supposed to be a real quick video. God, so frustrating. I'm going to show you why. Let's come on over here. All right, guys. We ran into a little bit of a problem. I'm going to show you what happened. Um, all right. Sorry about the hand holding the camera. Try to keep it still. But anyway, so here it is. So what I did is I just normally come over here. I'll show you what you normally would do. You'd hit default. That's just kind of a way to start things off. And then it kind of sets up things so that you can, you know, start a, a, a known place every time. And then what I would do is I'd come over here to tracking generator. I mean, I might set up the frequencies and all this stuff first, but normally I would, I would turn on tracking generator so I can see what's happening. And look, it's all grayed out. I was just practicing that, uh, this whole video for you. I spent a whole day doing this, just make sure I could... Uh, do it without any glitches and I wasn't expecting this but I guess the license expired and it's gone it's too bad but normally what you do is turn on the tracking generator and then the trace would come across the screen and the trace isn't going to be perfect because I'm using non-perfect cables and you know I'm just using this kind of cable which is not RF but I wasn't really going to do RF frequencies I was going to do the lower band because of the frequency band this filter so I thought it'd be okay but what happens is the frequency band I was going to show you it's a little crooked it kind of drops off down here and kind of zigzags so then what you do you know regardless that this is the normal process because no one's leads are exactly perfect right so then what you come down to do is there's this thing called normalize right here and you click on that and it comes over here in a window and you say on and then what it does is it looks at your signal and it knows the signal that it's putting out right here and so it says oh okay you dropped 
5 dBs there, so I'm going to boost you. So what it does is it just uh, makes your line straight. It just puts the signal in so that you get a straight line, okay? That way, when you look at your filter, you can see the effect of your filter and not the effect of all this. So it's just a way of essentially, um, you know, like, you know, like in a multimeter where you have the relative function where you can zero out whatever measurement you have going on so you can say, okay, this is relatively zero volts, zero whatever. Yeah, it's like that. So it's a normalizing and it talks about that, you know, in that most standard I showed you. So then you get a straight line and then you take your contacts and you just touch your filter. You touch the input of your filter and it shows you the insertion loss. It's just, you're putting the filter in parallel to this connection right here. And just because it has capacitors in it, you'll see how it drops down. That's what it would have showed you, something like that <laughs> on the screen. And I was gonna show you that. And then I was gonna show you when you go uh, put this on the input of your filter and then you look at your output, then those filters would have dropped it down here and then they would have eventually came back up because but down here at the lower frequencies, they would have done what they're supposed to do. And then at high frequencies, the inductions and that, they're gonna go back up. So that's what I was gonna show you. So we're, I'm gonna try a different method, okay? So hold on a second. Yeah, sorry, man, I can't believe it. I mean, geez, uh, day late, dollar short, right? I, I just, yeah, I just spent the weekend practicing this and here it is Monday night and thought I'd just uh, walk through the video now that I had it all worked out. All right, so the other thing besides my licenses going out, my uh, microphone wasn't recording. I'm hoping it's recording right now. Jeez, uh, it was dead. So I redid that whole video, found out the license was gone, all that stuff live, and I turned and the audio wasn't on. But I think I got audio on this, so hopefully we got that. If not, you're going to see a new testing cycle starting right now. <laughs> and you'll find out all this stuff. But yeah, so licenses expire. That's too bad. So you know what? Let's uh, come on over and I'm going to show you how I tried to recover this video. You know what? Before we move on, I'm going to show you something. Just show you that it is a license. Uh, you know, there was a small part of me that thought oh man did i damage something but i was sure i didn't because everything is working when i shut it down la last night but okay so here's the system button you hit that it goes in and look all this stuff see all these things that just went inactive i had a vector signal analysis the emi i was going to try to show you the emi uh module of this Trying to get that so you're not seeing too many reflections. But anyway, yeah, all these things, there's tracking generator, inactive. So, yeah, nothing damaged, just everything went inactive. So you just have to, if you own one of these, if you've, if you've had, I think when you first get it, they might turn those things on so you can try them out. I'm not sure about that, but uh, I'll ask and find out, okay? Get back to you. All right, guys, this is what I came up with. Unity generator. Uh, it's only appropriate since I got a unity spectrum. I am doing a sweep frequency. So I'm starting at 10 kilohertz, stopping at 50 megahertz. This will go up to 60. I just thought I'd stop at 50. Nice round number. And it's going to take seven seconds to do a sweep. That way we have time to look at things. Okay, now let me show you what we're looking at. So, all right, so that's what we're looking at. Uh, Stop frequencies 50 megahertz. Start frequencies 10 kilohertz. So if you haven't seen me put it in before, I've shown how to use this thing before in other videos. So 10K, because it starts at 9K. So we're starting just after that, going to 50 megahertz, okay? So you can see the signal I'm injecting. It stays somewhere in between these two lines, most of the way across. It starts to fade right down here a little bit, but still, it's above the line, about a quarter of the way up here. So, all right, so that's kind of what it looks like, okay? Now, I can go to bandwidth, and I can um, get a lower noise floor here, too. I've already got three kilohertz resolution, pretty good. Oh, there's one kilohertz, look at that. 
Now, this is 100 dBs down here, okay? So, yeah, maybe I'll just do that. Really, what we care about is this peak. So, it's almost like you could plot points across here, okay? <laughs> so, you can kind of watch, see what's happening. Watch the frequency change. Now, maybe I slowed it down too much. It's doing too much math, and maybe the sweep versus uh, the rate of how this guy's operating isn't really working right now. It looks like it's not doing as well. So I'm gonna go 3K so it'll go a little faster. There we go. That looks a little bit better, right? I could go a little higher even. It just raises the noise floor, but that looks pretty smooth too. Maybe I'll just leave it there for now, okay? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we're gonna use this filter. I was gonna use this one, but since we ran into this little snafu, I think I'll just do this in another video showing another way to do this with your oscilloscope, okay? Uh, but this one, it's made by Quarcom. It's hard to see that. Uh, Quarcom is a big company that makes a lot of these kind of filters. You can see the, like the brown paper kind of insulators there. So these terminals were insulated, okay? So that way, this is a Faraday shield, and then you put your ground on each side, so it's only the Y capacitor is going to the shell, okay? Not supposed to be uh, conducting electricity, except for a little bit of Y capacitance. So I've got the two black ones on the black lead there, okay? And then the red lead is under here, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect those to that, and then we'll go back and look at the screen. So, okay, so just to show you again what we're looking at, that's what it looks like without the filter. And then when I connect the filter basically in parallel to these, this connection, right? It's not going through the filter, it's just, it's just in parallel now. It's, we're gonna see what kind of loss is the insertion loss by inserting this into the circuit in parallel, what does it do? The capacitors here are gonna filter some of that noise, some of that frequency content. So let's see how it works. All right, so there we go. I've got the leads connected to it right there, okay? So it's just connected in parallel, right? So we got whatever there is inside here, capacitor and, you know, there's a couple legs, there's probably a couple, several capacitors going across here. And yeah, they're all tied in parallel to this. So let's go see what's happening. Look how low the signal is, now it comes up. Now it's still below the line, but look how it, sh look how it shrinks and then it comes up. So it's got a big dip right here and then it comes up, right? So now this is uh, 50 megahertz here, it's 25 meg here, so it's fi uh, five megahertz here. So it's doing most of its filtering right inside there. So right at about one megahertz is where it's steepest. And that, that would probably be about right because for line frequency, 60 hertz, uh, the rectifier noise and all that stuff, you're really worried about these frequencies here. So you can kind of see what it's doing there. Okay. Now what I could do is I could come over here and go frequency and let's just go to stop at, uh, let's do five megahertz. Yeah, see what it's doing? So it comes, where is it? It's dropping down and it's, it's lowest point right around in here. All right, so the center frequency is about 2.5 meg. So right about, yeah, right about there. So you can kind of see, see the filtering action, right? So, and that's just by Putting it in parallel, you're actually getting some filtering. That's insertion loss. So imagine all the things plugged into your power line, all those capacitors helping filter things. You got a bunch of stuff in your house helping you work it, work out the filter. All right, now I've got the input coming into this filter and the output uh, is right here. So now we're going through the filter. Uh, this is, you know, if I didn't, I probably didn't say it, but this is an EMI filter for line voltages, 115 to 250, okay? 50, 60 hertz kind of stuff. Uh, I have the model number up here. I'll show you the data sheet on that real quick just so you can see what this filter is, okay? 
All right, so here is a specification for the Quarcom. Uh, over here, test specifications, recommended receiving high pot. So lots of information here. Here's the physical characteristics. And there's the EMI schematic. And there's the company, Quarcom. There's the catalog number. So here we go. We have our input type right to chassis. That's the only connection in chassis except for these two Y capacitors. So um, that's why you tie this to chassis so you can let these two Y capacitors uh, do some filtering back to safety ground. Not earth ground guys, but safety ground. Uh, even though at some point they're the same thing, but earth doesn't matter. So here's a common mode choke. And now this one is not showing common mode. This one is showing differential. So two inductors, differential inductors. So you have one common mode stage with X cap, X cap, two Y capacitors that work with this common mode. And then these X capacitors will, there'll be some differential inside the common mode but they'll work with this differential mode. And then we have a capacitor over here for the other side of the differential. So, and then this resistor is just to discharge all these capacitors when power is removed. So there you go. So let's go up and look, see what's happening here. Wow, it's gone, it's gone, where is it? It's gone, yeah, so. Yeah, it's done an awesome job at these frequencies up to our stop frequency five meg is doing great. So let's go back to 50 meg, okay? Oh, I hit the buttons over on the pad. I mean, you have multiple ways of doing this. You can use a dial, you can use this pad, you can use this pad, whatever you like. So if your intuition says to use one thing, you're right. Okay, now I can make the screen bigger by doing that. Where is it? Oh, there it is. So it's start. So this is about five megahertz, right? Look, right around six, seven megahertz, it comes out of the grass, out of the weeds. But even though you can see it, it's being attenuated quite a bit because look, this is forty dBs right here. It's forty dBs right around here, so around twenty-five megahertz. So, and then even at the end of the fifty megahertz, it's still down about around t minus 20 so it was up around minus 5 yeah it's down around minus 20 something so yeah we still have a lot of attenuation all the way out to 50 megahertz so there you go that is a way you can use your spectrum to see how your filters work uh, now this is a little signal we're going to talk about that in another video I guess all right I heard you guys so I went ahead and did this. I'm using the two outside terminals, the middle legs, the ground leg. So it'd really be good to tie that to something. But anyway, well, I don't know. I mean, this is, I'm gonna use this for DC. So we're gonna probably just use these outside terminals. So that's one way to use this filter. I'm gonna show you another way, but that's one way. So let's go see what it's doing. It's kind of coming out of the weeds right around. The, it's looking very similar to the other filter, isn't it? So, yeah, looks pretty similar. Now, this has two common mode chokes. And then see that gray cap, X cap, X cap, X cap. And then we have a Y cap here, Y cap here, and a resistor for dampening. That might be in series with this capacitor. I haven't really reverse engineered that board, but... That's probably what it's doing. Or it's just basically there to discharge the capacitors when the power's not there. That's a really good op uh, possibility as well. All right, all right. I'm gonna give you a sneak preview of another video, but now look, if I just use one side of the combo choke, I'm using the ground terminal and just one side, okay? So input to output. So we're not using the other side. Now I could take this side and short to this side, which is Kind of a tip what I'm going to end up doing probably. But yeah, so that's a way to turn these comm mode chokes into differential mode. Now let's go up here and see what's happening.
Where is it? Oh, there it is. But look, it stays down about this low. So it comes up about the same spot, and then it kind of wiggles, but it stays down around minus 40 dB all the way across. So, yeah, that's a possibility to connect it up that way. All right, so, yeah, the licenses were gone, and I did what I could. Use this little Unity generator, and, hey, you know, Unity's been awesome leaving this with me as long as they did, long enough for the licenses to expire. Holy cow, I can't believe it. Man, that's embarrassing. Uh, God, yeah, I spent a lot of time this weekend preparing for this video because I, I, anyway, so hopefully that recovery still was able to show you something. The tracking generator's way cooler the way it works, so just trust me on that. Uh, guys, I have that little June Tech up there, that 80 meg generator, which is really nice, uh, but I like this one just because it's so small. It's always right here, easy to use. But yeah, I want to use that guy more often because it is a really nice generator. But uh, I think Unity sent me a new generator that's probably going to be even nicer. We'll find out. We'll see if it's any better than that one up there or even better than this one. I'm sure it's their generator and I think it's an improvement on this one. So it's bigger. It's more of that format. So we'll see when I open up that box. But all right, guys, I'm going to wrap up this video. Gosh, uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked it. This is just one of those videos I spent a lot of time on. And and in the end, usually I can recover and, and make a good video. But this time, I lost my license. So all the stuff I was doing this weekend, I couldn't show you. Darn it. I'm going to look through my footage and see if I actually recorded any of that stuff if i did i'm going to show you a little section in here okay so it'll be a trailer on this probably so <sighs> thanks for watching guys uh, two thumbs up to unity two thumbs up to my members of my channel and to danny my team member way to go bud thank you very much appreciate that and two thumbs up to you guys that have subscribed during this video two thumbs up to you guys thank you let's grow this channel um yeah, it used to be, you know, people that started this kind of channel 10 years ago, their channels just shot up. And even five years ago, well, no, I started about that long. But guys, just before me, um, but man, I've watched other channels and, and uh, yeah, I, I, I watched some stuff that guys are always asking people to subscribe because I think what's happened is, is, after COVID and stuff like that, people stopped subscribing to channels. I don't know. And then also YouTube unsubscribes people. So if you think you're subscribed, check down below. If it says subscribe, for some reason they unsubscribed you. It's almost a way to keep us flat. Our growth stays, you know. I don't know why they'd want to do that, but I don't know. It just seems weird that uh, I was projected to get to 100,000 in about a year from now. That was a little over a year ago and uh now it's it's projecting that like five years out so yeah it's so weird um it's like the money's everything's like flat uh so anyway all right so subscribe thank you appreciate it two thumbs up to my patreons and um to anybody who's hit that thank you super thank you button i think it's been a little bit but i'm going to put the last guys that did it right here okay all right, guys, thanks so much for watching, sticking with me, and sorry the video didn't turn out the way I wanted it to, but I think it at least showed the spectrum what it can do without a tracking generator, and maybe that's worthwhile. Thanks for watching. See you next time.